Hello little hoes, my name is Kristen and welcome back to my channel. Today's video has kind of been in the works for a while now. I even shot this video but then scrapped it because I didn't feel like I had all the information or all the numbers to make it super helpful for anyone else. So this video is about my philodendron collection and which ones on a scale of one to five, one being the lowest, are which ones are the most humidity needy. And I don't know, I've mentioned it before, but I'm going to try and get philodendrons this year into my collection that maybe aren't quite as humidity needy or at least plan out my setup better before I get them. So the reason I didn't go through with my first video was because I wanted to get these handy dandy little hygrometers that test um, on this particular model both the humidity and the temperature. And I got a five pack of these I want to say and I just put them in various places around the house just to kind of show you guys in numbers what my humidity level is like at each spot. I thought that might be more helpful than me just telling you how humid I thought the area may or may not be. So I got these guys. They are super helpful. I will say that they might be slightly off in their calibrations. I didn't pay a whole lot for these, so there was some discrepancy, and I'm not super worried about that. They're fairly accurate uh, overall and to each other. So my plan today is to go around, show you guys the philodendrons in their homes where they reside for most of the time, slash all the time, and tell you what the humidity is like and how they like it. Let's start with the sunroom, which I'm in right now. I don't have a hell of a lot of philodendrons in here, but I do have a few. Firstly, here is the hygrometer. It is very low in my sunroom for humidity. It generally hovers around the 40% mark, sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little bit more. There's a lot of factors in the humidity. If we're cooking, this room gets super humid, especially if we boil anything. Um, if I water, the humidity goes up a ton. And in summer, it's pretty humid in here too. But in winter, it's I think probably long term, it will hover around that 40 mark. So the first philodendron to show you is this dude here. And this is the lemon lime philodendron and I had it outside over summer and it was so, so happy and it grew so fast. Then I had to bring it in for winter. I didn't really have a whole lot of space in the other room and I did want to give it more sunlight to keep it that very vivid gold. So it did have a really rough transition period. As you can see, there's a bunch of dead naked branches but it has recovered quite nicely and I would say that it's probably a lower needs uh, philodendron for humidity so I'd give it a two I think uh, it would probably grow a lot faster a lot lusher if it had more humidity but it's very tolerant moving over here is the beautiful Mexicanum that Suzette gave me and I don't know what possessed me to keep it in here. I think I really wanted to see if this particular form would get the red backsides on it, but it hasn't. I think it's just a form of the species that's plain green, which is totally cool with me. Um, but I thought, you know, it's doing really well. I think, again, it would probably do even better if I were to give it more humidity, a lot faster growth, but it's very tolerant, which I am appreciative of. So I would give this probably a three because I think, you know, again, you're going to get more growth, but it's tolerant. Down here is the sad, wonky, painted lady of philodendron, and 
She's seen better days. I think you guys remember I chop and propped her because she was so funky and top heavy. So she does reasonably well in here. Uh, and the reason that I put her in this sunroom to begin with was because I was getting a whole bunch of leaves that were just kind of plainish green. You could see like slight flecks to them like this guy but the variegation was pretty dull in the other room. And I will say, especially with the top growths, that you are going to find a lot more variegation if you put them in more sun. That being said, I have had some leaves unfurl kind of funky from the lack of humidity. But overall, this is probably a 2 on the humidity index for me. I think it is tolerant. Hey guys, we are now in the bathroom. And here is the hygrometer here. It's at 50% now, and it's usually all over the place in the bathroom. Just because we use the sink a lot. There's three different people using the shower on a daily or every other day basis. So the humidity fluctuates a ton in here. At its most, it's at 99% humidity and probably quickly dissipates. I think probably the 50 mark is fairly average for it. Sometimes it's a little bit less, sometimes it's more, and it does dry out in here pretty quick because of the air vent and the size of the room. But I will go through here. Now this guy is a more recent addition to the bathroom. This is my silver sword. Philodendron Hestatum, and I did have it out in the living room at one point in time when I first got it, and it wasn't doing great. Um, the leaves just weren't coming out pristinely. They were kind of getting stuck, which is a kind of a classic hallmark of lack of humidity. I put it in my grow tent for a while, and it really perked up. Uh, so I will say that this one probably is happier with a little bit more. It really just depends. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure what sort of rating to give it. I think I might just go smack in the middle at a three. My other philodendron in here is this wonderful ring of fire. Very dusty ring of fire. It is very surprising. I don't find that it needs a ton of humidity. I would have to say that this might be like a two and a half for me, if not slightly lower. They emerge just fine. There's been a couple times in the dead of winter where a new leaf has emerged and it's kind of gotten stuck. As you can see, with, can you see that with that stem, it kind of got a little bit bent as it came out, but I gave it some spray. I just got some water in a spray bottle, misted down the leaf as it emerged, and it kind of helped it to pop. Up here, the only other philodendron I have is this philodendron by Penifolium Hammerhead Gold. I don't know that I've had this guy super long enough to give an accurate opinion, but if I were to, I'd say it's, it's a good sort of middle of the road to lower, maybe again a two and a half to three. This is the living room and I kind of differentiate it from the grow tent half. This is what I talk about when I talk about the living room. It's just out in the open. It's not covered. Um, it doesn't really even have a humidifier on it right now, although I've thought about maybe trying to put one in here somewhere. So philodendrons here, this is the McDowell's that Suzette gave me. Um, it's putting out a new leaf. I'm so excited about it. I don't know that I've had it again long enough to say what it likes and doesn't. I do think it might end up being kind of a three just because it's very slow for me. And from what I've heard, they're fast growers but I think humidity really does affect that growth. 
beast in the back is the Squamiferum. I absolutely love it. This is probably my fastest growing philodendron. No matter where I put it, even if it's being a bit slow, it's still my fastest grower. I love it so much for that fact. It's kind of instant gratification. Not to mention, I mean, those petioles. Yes, I could go on for hours about how much I love it, but for humidity purposes, it grew incredibly fast in the bathroom, and I'm sure more humidity, again, equals more growth. But it's extremely tolerant of this low, low humidity situation. And just to show you, it's at 45% in here, and the main reason it goes up is because I either missed the leaves in here or I've just watered. Um, again, it's probably affected a little bit in summer too. It's fairly humid in here, but in winter, it's very low. And it's being an absolute champ. It's put off that whole new section here of growth. It had a sulking period after I air layered it, chopped off the top, but it's coming back. So I want to say that this guy for humidity is, gosh, maybe even like a one, one and a half. It's very tolerant and it still puts out these magnificent leaves. I thought in the beginning that it wouldn't grow at all, but it's really grown fast in here. And the whole reason I took it out of the bathroom is because it was getting too big. It's very happy. This is probably one of my number one recommendations for anyone that has low humidity or difficulty maintaining humidity in their house. Moving down, this is Philodendron Camposportianum. And so this one's kind of an interesting one. It did great things when I had it briefly in the grow tent, but I knew that it was fairly tolerant of the low humidity. So I put it back out here and you can see the leaves kind of get a bit crumply and like this guy, it just never emerged. And I think this was about the time I moved it out of the grow tent, so it was a real shock to it. But overall, I want to say that this is going to be kind of a lower end one, maybe like a two and a half. Um, if I could, I would give it more humidity just because I feel like the leaves would come out more pristine there would be maybe some faster growth because I really do want to see what the, the more mature form of these leaves look like. Anyway, you slice it. This one's a fast grower too. Maybe even like number two to the Squammy for me. It just, this is all new growth in the past couple of months. Very fast grower. And it loves to put out little aerial roots on this guy. So I'm going to have to get him a bigger moss pull this year. My Lime Fiddle Philodendron. And again, it's a bit of a newer plant for me. Haven't even had it a full year, but it's very impressive. Um, I want to say that it's going to be kind of a lower end with humidity. Maybe like at a two and a half. It really doesn't need a lot to grow. I think it right now is just struggling because I repotted it. It didn't have a ton of root system, which is surprising because it has a ton of top growth and new growth. So it's on the struggle bus for that. But humidity wise, it's not super fussy and the leaves emerge fine. <laughs> they are slightly contorted to begin with, so it's kind of hard to tell. That is sort of the tabletop. Now moving down here. Sorry, this area is a bit messy. This is my Philodendron Tahiti. And this guy was in a hanging basket. I put him in a big old pot with this moss pool. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know. Honestly, like you can see some of these new growths are struggling. And I feel these came out at like the worst timing. We had a cold snap. The air vents started turning on all the time. So I think that that really drained a lot of humidity from the atmosphere here. But pretty easy going. And 
I would probably say that this is going to be maybe a two and a half. I think the leaves would probably be bigger and a little bit nicer looking in more humidity, but I, I ain't mad at it. It's pretty easy going. And then the other philodendron I have on the floor is my subhastatum. This leaf is really weird because it was starting to grow through the bars and the, the rack over here. So I had to move it out here. Um, he does really well, um, honestly, in lower humidity from what I've been seeing. And again, I haven't had it super long, haven't even had it a full year to really determine that. But I would say he's probably at like a two for me as well, maybe even lower. Um, he has dealt with some bugs on him, which I'm sure kind of stunts him. But I'm just going to tentatively say he's another good one for low humidity. Now to enter into the most magnificent ghetto, janky, ugly, grow tent known to man. But it works and I appreciate it for that. Um, so this section here, uh, I do have a hygrometer on both the top and bottom racks and surprisingly they're both pretty similar to each other. I think it's really getting some good circulation in there, uh, hence why the numbers are similar. It does dip down into like the 40s when I don't have my humidifier on. When the humidifier is running, and I do have it at various settings, depending on if I'm gone for a long time or not, usually I have it on full blast. And if I get the seal just right on this front flap, um, again, this is shower curtains. It's very makeshift. It doesn't really have any closures. I just use the clip. If I get a good seal on it, I can get it up to 99%, which is quite impressive, and it makes me so happy to see just how humid and visibly foggy it gets in here. But that's kind of the best case. Um, in reality, it's probably from the 70 to mid-80 percentage for humidity. So this is my miracle child. This is the philodendron bilati. It came in pretty decent looking, but quickly declined, had some root rot going on, so I stuck it in an orchid pot in my terrarium, had spag moss around the roots, made an amazing recovery. Um, it lived in the terrarium for quite a while, which is probably residing at uh, low to mid 80%. As long as it's fairly damp in there, that's what it normally is. It was so happy in that, grew so fast, but quickly outgrew it. So I hung it up here, um, put it in soil. It's kind of sulked a bit, transitioning. You can see there's a new leaf that's trying to emerge. I've had to mist it because I think it's kind of struggling to get out. Um... So I'm not quite sure what to rate this one. I'm, I might go smack in the middle at three just because I'm not 100% sure. Philodendron elegans or elegans here. Uh, this guy is kind of picky. I, I don't even know because it spent so much time in this grow tent. I want to say it's fairly rapid growth is due to the humidity. However, when I grew it outside the grow tent, it was also fairly fast. It just grew super leggy. I might I might put this again smack at the middle at three. I think it's probably a species that prefers more. This is Philodendron Graziel. This guy is such an ugly fellow. I probably wouldn't have got it knowing it's going to be such a pain and I'm not sure if there's been some bug issues with it that I'm just not noticing um or if it's just in need of such extreme humidity to grow well and put out decent looking leaves I'm gonna say that this is at least a four if not a five 
for humidity. I, I can't substantiate it yet. I haven't seen any bugs per se on it. I don't think that's what's going on. So my one guess is that it does need more humidity. Now, this guy is honestly surprising me at the moment. This is my philodendron... That's incorrect. That tag shouldn't be in there. <laughs> this is my philodendron mame. This is one of my most dramatic philodendrons when it comes to humidity, and I would put this probably at a five. It's such a weird one. It... The leaves are crunchy on it, and I can tell that it's just, it's not getting enough humidity. Maybe the terracotta is just wicking away too much moisture. I think I might need to put it in a plastic pot, see if that kind of helps retain the soil moisture. You can see that it's starting to emerge kind of funky, kind of crispy. I've wet this down quite a bit over the last few days, so it has popped out of its wet teeth. It doesn't look pristine, but you know what? I'll take it. Philodendron Florida Ghost. I haven't grown it outside of the grow tent since I got it, but I do think because it is hybrid of, I believe, Podatum, that it should do very well in lower conditions. But because I haven't really tried it out yet, I'm going to put it in the middle at three but I have a suspicion that it could even be more of a two. In the back, Mr. Jose Bueno. Bueno. Looking a little dusty, but doing good. Um, this guy, I've had it out of the grow tent in its early years, and it did very well considering. I would say that this guy could be like a two to two and a half on him. It really isn't too picky of a plant. I think my main gripe with it is that you have to have intense light to pick up the variegation on it. The big burl marks variegated, looking so weird right now. Very easy growth. I've had it in low humidity conditions and high humidity conditions. It grows honestly very similarly, maybe faster, but they emerge just fine, even in low conditions. So I'd say this is maybe like a one and a half to two for me. And I think it kind of goes without saying, guys, that everybody's humidity and climate is very different. So what would be low for me might not be for you and vice versa. Down from that is the philodendron melanochrysum. And again, this is a super dramatic one. It put out such wonky looking leaves when I had it just in the bathroom, which was not nearly enough humidity for it. It's done a lot better in the grow tent. All this is new growth and this is its newest leaf. I would put this at five. For me, it's just very dramatic. It won't grow hardly at all without a decent amount. And moving down, down, down. Philodendron brantianum. Another super dramatic plant. And I don't know why it puts out such freaking ugly leaves. And it's honestly kind of brittle too. Maybe it's just a very shitty genetics on this particular one. But I'm not impressed. And I'm not sure if there's something wrong with it, per se, or if it just needs such huge humidity levels to do well. I would say that at least humidity is part of the problem, so I'm going to put this one at a four. I think it definitely needs more to do more. Philodendron Gloriosum. Uh, this is probably tied for my most dramatic humidity needs plant. This and the mame are on the same level. Now, that being said, this guy has put out some awesome leaves since I put it in this grow tent. This is when I didn't have it in the grow tent, and you can see how funky that is. Even some torn leaves. So, I would rate this squarely at a five. You need to have good humidity to make this thing happy.
Philodendron rugosum aberrant form. I felt that this plant would do a lot better with low humidity, but it didn't. It grew so much better um, in the grow tent. My friend Julia said that hers is the same way. You get a lot more growth and better looking leaves when you put it in more humidity. And I totally agree with that. I'd put this guy at a four, you know, maybe a three and a half, four. Philodendron bipenifolium splash gordon. Sorry, let me get that in focus. Uh, this guy I recently propagated, so that's why it's got all that new growth looking so fabulous. Uh, this guy I've had before out of the grow tent and it grows quite fast. The leaves do come out a little funky, but I do think that maybe the variegation on this sort of distorts the plant to a, to an extent. I would say that this might be like a two and a half to three for me. This is my philodendron varicosum, my sad decapitated baby. Uh, you guys might remember it got smashed by the shower head because I was trying to shower off some of the spider mites. The spider mites just exploded on this guy just seemingly overnight. So I don't know how to rate this. Before the spider mites, I'd say that this guy was like two and a half to three. It grew so well in the bathroom, so fast, wasn't fussy at all. And then just one day it exploded with the spider mites and either I have some super strain of spider mites or maybe it was a response to the air vents turning on a lot more because it suddenly got colder and you know spider mites like low humidity too. So I, I might just say that this is again going to be smack in the middle at a three. It does grow well, but I think to keep the spider mites at bay, you might want to give it as much humidity as you can. Keep it from stressing out too much. Make sure it's adequately watered. So, a three it shall be. In my grow box, which you may or may not see in too well, I have a philodendron fibrosum. Another solid five for that one. I can't get it to grow. I think some of it has to do with like the lack of roots, having issues with that. But my suspicion is that to do well, it needs extreme humidity. I hope that video made sense and the rating system wasn't too weird. It made sense in my head, but I'm not sure if it translates well outside of my noggin. Hopefully you guys found this interesting and helpful. Um, if any of you guys have YouTube channels and want to do a similar video, I would love to see what plants, um, aeroids or specifically philodendrons you find to be super humidity needy and lower humidity needy. That will do it guys. As always, stay safe, healthy, and sane. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. -bye.